All right, so <clears throat> we are on chapter five. All right, and we've already seen that um, Soup and Rob, Rob get into a lot of trouble together. A lot instigated by our friend Soup, right? Right? This is called cheating Mr. Diskin. What does it mean if you cheat somebody? You can cheat on a test. That means you, you do something that doesn't show, you do something to get the answers or something like that, right? You trick them. Yeah, so if you cheat somebody, you're trick, you trick them, okay? Usually it has to do with money. money. Yes. I don't think we ought to do it, Soup. We don't have to do it every time, Rob. But let's do it just this once. Well, oh, I'm that? against it. How come you're against it all of a sudden? Didn't Allie Tidwell get away with it? He said he did. Maybe he was lying. Allie doesn't lie, said Sue. Yeah, he does. Name one. Well, he told me he caught a 10-pound catfish in Lake Champlain. And then a week after, his pa said it didn't even weigh six. Okay, said Sue. So Allie fibbed about the catfish. Doesn't mean he lies all the time. I never said he did, Soup. Then why don't we try it once? Just once, I said. Just once, Rob. Okay, I'm game. I figure the whole trick is to find the right stone. Here's one, I said. Too small, said Soup. That old pebble won't weigh enough to make any difference. We gotta get the price up to 20 cents at least. Or it'll be one heck of a long trip into town for nothing. You're right, I said to Soup. If our, tin foil bring, if our tin foil brings only 18 cents, we both can't go to the picture show. As we walked into town, Soup and I were silent for a while. What's the picture show? A movie. The very thought of missing the double feature was a Saturday afternoon tragedy. We both knew what was playing and had known for a week. The first movie was Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. Have you guys ever heard of Laurel and Hardy? I, I mean, I've heard of them. They're a comedy team. That's all I know, but they're pretty famous. That had a gorilla and a piano in it. We'd seen the previews of coming attractions on the Saturday before. The second feature was a cowboy movie with Dick Foran, the singing cowboy. Only in the movie, he wasn't Dick Foran. He was a cowboy named Chip. Neither Soup nor I could have missed seeing the double bill of the day. To miss seeing these two shows would have been next to heartbreak. We just had to have 20 cents to, as each ticket was a dime. We better hurry, Soup. We have to walk all the way to Mr. Diskin's and get our money and then all the way back to the movie theater. We need a stone, said Soup. It's wrong, Soup. Let's not do it. We could miss the show if we don't. You win, we'll do it. But I don't feel right about it, Soup. The only reason I'll go along is that we need 20 cents. Why in the heck didn't we ask Mama for a couple of pennies? We should have, said Soup, but it's too late now. We're almost to Diskin's junk junkyard. Almost? He's Jewish, said Soup. Who? Old Mr. Diskin. I heard somebody say so. Who told you? I know I know who it was. It was that man who told Allie Tidwell that it was all right to put a stone in the middle of a ball of tinfoil and cheat old, old Diskin because it wasn't really so bad to cheat, cheat a Jew. Is that right? No. No. It's bad to cheat anyone. If we had 20 cents worth of tinfoil soup, I wouldn't do this. Neither would I, but I heard that guy say that there was no such thing as a good Jew. Is he right? No. Maybe not, I said, but if there was a good Jew, it sure would be Mr. Diskin. He's the only one I know, and he's been great to us. Yeah, he has, said Soup, letting out a sigh. Hey, here's a stone that's just the right size. How can you tell? It's small, but it's heavy. Here, heft it. I hefted the pebble in my hand. It wasn't a very big... Stone, so I figured you, we really weren't cheating Mr. D Diskin out of two more, out of more than a penny or two. I'll do it, said Soup. We unrolled our ball of tinfoil, planted the pebble inside at the very core, and wrapped layer upon layer of shiny tinfoil so it resumed its original appearance of a small cabbage. So what are they doing? So they're trying to get more weight into their ball of tinfoil. So 
Have you ever taken your cans to a can collection place and gotten some money for it? And what they do is they weigh how much you have and then they give you money based on how much you have. Okay. Now, junkyards would do that with tinfoil. Okay, so they were trying to get their tinfoil to weigh more so that they could get more money out of it. So they figured they had about 18 cents worth of tinfoil, right? But they needed 20 cents. So they decided that they were going to put a stone in their tinfoil so it would weigh more so they would get more money. So what happens if they get caught? No, probably not. Um, do you think he's going to be very willing to give them to to work with them next time? Probably not. They're bur they're burning some bridges here, but they feel like it's worth it. Do you think it would be worth it? Why? I don't know. It doesn't really seem like a good idea to me. Um. Well, twenty cents was enough to get them into the movie theater for a double feature. So it was a lot of money. I don't know, but yeah. <clears throat> 10 minutes later, Soup and I ran through the gate that was under the sign Diskin's Junkyard. Mr. Diskin saw us coming and got out of his rocking chair. He was smiling just like he always did. Deep inside my stomach there was a inside my stomach there was a hard small hard place as if I had hid the stone inside my soul. I hated the whole business so bad I wanted to turn and run, but instead I handed the ball of tin foil to Mr. Diskin. I noticed his hands as they took the ball out of mine. His hands were old and white and seemed to be more like claws. He put the ball of tin foil on the old red scales that he, we that he weighed things on, and while the scales were balancing, he did a little trick, the one he always did. Pulling an old handkerchief from his pants pocket, he held it over his eyes. He pretended he was just as blindfolded for the scales. He always did it, and we always laughed. It was so absurd that it was funny, because it was Mr. Diskin's way of telling us that he was honest and that he gave everybody an equal price. Soup and I both liked Mr. Diskin. We, re we liked anyone who enjoyed a chuckle or two. He never talked. Mr. Diskin never said a word. Just took your stuff and weighed it up in the, uh, on the balance, then paid you the 10 cents. Seems like he always knew that the kids wanted a dime for the Saturday movies. Soup and I held our breath. Mr. Diskin took our ball of tinfoil out of the balance and shuffled inside his old shack to get his money. That's where he kept his supply of dimes, but we didn't know exactly where. He must have had a thousand dimes back inside that dark that darkness. He was long, gone longer than usual. It seemed to soup that soup and me that he was inside for almost a year. Then he came out, but on this day he wasn't smiling. He held out our we held out our eager hands for the money inside my sneaker. My toes were moving around a lot. That was because I was looking at my feet. I didn't want to look at Mr. Diskin, and then, and when I finally did look, when I finally did look at his old face, he wasn't smiling. Mr. Diskin handed us three things: two dimes and a stone. It was the stone that Soup and I had hid inside our ball of tin foil. Thank you, Mr. Diskin," said Soup. "We're sorry about the stone," I said. Looking at Mr. Diskin, I expected to see tears rolling down his cheek or to see his, him use his old hanky and wipe his cheeks, but he didn't cry. He just stood there looking at the little stone and moving his head back and forth a tiny bit as if, as if his old hat was saying no. On the way to the movies, Soup said, I never felt as bad as I do right now in my whole life. Neither do I, I said. I feel like a hunk of dirt. Me too, said Soup. An old person who's nothing but nice to you. Yeah, unless they're germs, then I don't really care. Yeah, and that's kind of the thing. When somebody's nice to you, you want to be nice back to them. When they're mean to you, you kind of don't really care if you're bothered. Mm-hmm.